Part D, run Java web applications. All right. In this part, so we look at two ways to run Java web applications. Yeah. The first way in Tomcat directly. Okay. Tomcat. The second way, Eclipse. EE, -E. yeah, let me put the version EE, -E. yeah. So not the standard version Eclipse, it is the enterprise version Eclipse, yeah. All right. Uh, in this video, D.1, I want to look at the overview of running Java web applications. So I just give you some uh, background knowledge description. Yeah. I do not do anything yeah. after the first one. Yeah. Then I do in Tomcat, then in Eclipse. Okay, all right. So the first one, yeah. I want to talk about the Tomcat way. Yeah. So, oh, in Tomcat here. Yeah. But when I talk about running web applications in Tomcat directly, yeah, we know this is for the production version. production version okay yeah and uh, for development version although we can use this way yeah, if you like we can use this way but not efficient for development version we know we need to frequently change our code in in the web application frequently change but this way after you change, you do deployment, you know, you need, you need to do a lot of things. Then you, you get a web application running. Yeah. So here, this way, uh, so I want to say, yeah, for development, case, this way is not efficient. So that means we will not use this way in our development case. In my next slide, I talk about Eclipse way. So that will be more efficient because we can run directly. We can start our web application directly inside Eclipse and see the result immediately. Although we need to wait a few seconds. Yeah. yeah but it is much better, much faster than this way. But for a production, so you don't worry about the overhead, right? Here, I'm talking about not efficient is, you know, the overhead part. You need to sp spend quite some time for the overhead part, okay? So you need to wait, you know, do several things. Yeah, but for, pro for production version, we don't, we don't mind that part. Right, because after we get a very good solid production version of Java web application, we are willing to pay a little bit overhead. So then we get it running. Yeah, you know, very solid, very robust, so very powerful. We're happy, right? We're happy. Yeah. All right. Now let me describe. Actually, I talk about a little bit. I talk about a little bit. So here, let me just, uh, uh, you know, repeat that part again. We know uh, there is a Tomcat installation directory. So this is the installation directory. Right, so inside it, so you have many folders, yeah. But here, I only want to talk about this for the web apps. 
Yeah. So this folder is special for us. So we call document root. Concept. All right. Yeah. So when we, in order to run it, we basically we do simple things like this copy files or folder yeah so here copy file yeah one way copy so here let me just still use the duke example right duke duke example duke so this is a folder okay all right so this is the first way yeah the second way copy Remember archive file, wall file. So last time I mentioned Java web archive file, wall file. So we convert, we convert, we make the Duke web application, the folder to that wall file. Uh, so Duke dot W a r web archive w a r this is number the second way yeah we can copy this file into that web apps folder location yeah all right so then uh yeah here yeah before we go to the next step before we go to the next step so this wall file has the same structure as the zip file. Same structure as the zip file or jar file. J A R, jar file. Okay. So the zip file, jar file, wall file, they all have the same structure. The same structure. When, you know, when the software tool archive them, same structure. All right? Yeah. But just with different extension for different usages. So zip file, the general zip file, right? Jar file, we know. So typically, we use Java file to do two possible things. One, Java libraries. All the Java libraries are packaged in Java file. So that's one way. Another way, Java applications. We can, we can make runnable, runnable Java applications in one single Java file. So you double click it. So we call the runnable jar file. Yeah. So there is one case we call the runnable jar file. Okay. Yeah. Another possibility. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, but they have the same structure. Yeah. That means if you use the WinZip tool, you can extract all these three types of files so you can view what is inside you know all the items listed inside using winzip right yeah winzip tool you can view everything inside you know yeah yeah all right so anyway then so that's the deployment then running when you want to run your web application in this way, so you do this, you start Tomcat server. Now you know how to start, right? Yeah, in the previous video, yeah, I show you command line type startup command. In Windows machine, Mac machine, you know, you type that executable file. That's the executable file. Yeah. 
For Mac, you may need a little bit Unix knowledge. Yeah, it's a shell script, executable file, shell script. Yeah, so you need to have a little bit Unix knowledge. You can make that executable, right? How to make that shell script file executable, right? So you need to have that knowledge a little bit. So then you can start. Yeah. But here, this part, we just treat as knowledge. If you have difficulty doing this, it's okay. Yeah. It will not impact the whole semester. It will not. Because we will do the eclipse way. We won't do the we won't do the production way in this one. Here just give you the you know background knowledge. Yeah. Alright, so after you start Tomcat, then these web applications, you know, will be loaded. Loaded into the you know main memory, you know. JVM, so main memory, then Java virtual machine, JVM, right? So then the server, right? Yeah, the JVM, part of JVM, the server environment, the Java server, Tomcat Java server, so then you are ready to run. Yeah. But this wall file, when you start Tomcat, it will be extracted to that folder. Because if it's a wall file, you cannot run it directly from wall file. You have to unzip it, you know, just like a zip file, unzip it to, fo to a duke that folder. But Tomcat will do that automatically. You don't need to do that. So Tomcat, the first thing, the Tomcat will, uh, you know, extract, uh, on zip or on wall, you know, whatever you like to call, you know, uh, make it Duke folder first, then load the resources in that folder. So then ready to run. Okay, ready to run. All right, how to run, you bring up your web browser. Yeah, so how to run Yeah, here, I only have small space. So to run it, web browser you have you know any web browser all right yeah then you type url all right so let me just you know type the url http colon double slash localhost the port number default port number of tomcat 80 80 you can change if you like then the web application name here we use duke by default by default the folder name all right then after that nothing you just type enter enter so then the welcome file of this welcome file welcome file of this web application will be called will be bring, brought up will be brought up so the users can see the welcome page yeah but the question is what is the welcome page what is the welcome page right yeah so there are some a list of default welcome page people can use a list of default welcome page people can here for example so there is one possibility the welcome file one possibility index.jsp index.jsp is the most frequently used welcome file in a java web application index index yeah in php we know php the most frequently used the welcome file is the index.php right if some of you have the PHP experience, you know, that is the default welcome file, file name. Yeah. In Java, you know, the default index.jsp. Yeah, we will talk about JSP soon. Yeah, serve the JSP quickly yeah, in our module two. Yeah, yeah index.jsp. 
Yeah. So you do not need to type the file name, welcome by default. Okay. Yeah. But you can change its name if you like. So later we will we will do that part. We can make any file as our welcome file. We need to do that in a configuration file. All right. So this is the Tomcat, you know, running procedure description. Yeah. Then second slide I want to talk about in Eclipse environment. In Eclipse EE environment. In this environment. We know this environment is mainly used for development, not for production. It is convenient for development. So for this class, we will take this this way. Yeah. Some students use the IntelliJ. Uh, so then you you will use the IntelliJ way very similar to the eclipse way but you need to figure out the details IntelliJ the details yeah it should not be very hard yeah all right so here I I just talk about this eclipse uh EE version in eclipse we don't worry about Tomcat internal structure yeah all right so so here let me give you the general information about the relationship between Eclipse. I still connect to EE, all right? Otherwise, if it's not an EE version, standard version, you cannot connect to Tomcat, okay? Yeah, here I want to talk about the relationship between Eclipse EE and Tomcat. First, we know Eclipse E does not include Tomcat. You have to download Tomcat independently. Okay, yeah. Download it independently. Independent to that Eclipse. Inde All right, yeah. But Eclipse supports Tomcat supports Tomcat. Okay, yeah. Otherwise, if you find a server, Eclipse does not support, you cannot connect. Okay. Eclipse supports, that means it has the building structure mechanism. You can connect Tomcat to Eclipse, so then they can work seamlessly. That's the meaning. Yeah. So you need to download, but you need to connect. So that's the reason we need to configure them. Okay, we need to configure Tomcat inside Eclipse. Yeah. In, uh, you know, in my later video, I will go through that configuration. Okay, yeah. All right, after you configure Tomcat within inside Eclipse, then all right, so then the way to run Tomcat, Eclipse way to run Tomcat, okay? Uh, Eclipse EE, I still used it. So runs Tomcat in its own internal buffer. Yeah. Let me explain the meaning of this sentence. In its own internal buffer. So what's that? Yeah. So it, it's in a hidden way. When I talk about internal buffer, so this is a hidden way. Hidden way means 
for outside people, general outside people, you are not supposed to see the details. Yeah. So, eclipse people, eclipse uh, you know creators, builders. So those people, they try to hide that details from our outside people. Yeah. Try to hide. Yeah. So they put somewhere. If you really want to keep track of, you know, you can find it. Yeah. Especially. When you see some error message, you know, usually when you have some error message, you will see the hidden location. You try to hide. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, it's a long path with dot, you know, the location, you know, start with dot, you know, they try to hide it. You know, long name, you know, usually people don't like to go that location. Yeah. So that's why I say the hidden way, internal way. But somewhere, all right. So all your Java web applications deployed in that hidden location. Yeah. So your your Java web applications are deployed. In some hidden location, but we do we do not want to go there, right? Because we can see the source code inside Eclipse, so we don't we don't need to see the deployment location file, you know, everything. We don't need to see that. We can modify the source, you know, Eclipse will do the update. After that, you know, refresh, you know, restart, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, but you will see, uh, because this hidden way, the behavior will be different from the production way. The behavior will be different. The production way, you can go to the you know, the binary code in the deployment directory. But here, you cannot do it easily. If you're really, if some hacker really want to figure out, there is a possibility to figure out. And very hard. Yeah. Okay, very, very hard. Yeah. We won't do it. We won't do it. We just leave it there. We know it's hidden. It's in some buffer, so it's there, but we do not need to touch it. Okay, yeah, here, yeah. Uh, then to run the Java web application. Okay. Eclipse EE -E uses its internal web browser. Internal web browser. Web browser. Okay, yeah. Browser S. Yeah. Yeah. Internal. So what do we mean internal? Eclipse has a built-in web browser. Built in inside it. Inside the IDE, there is a built-in web browser. Yeah. So by default, it will use its internal web browser. But if you like to use the external, the regular web browser, you can do that. But you just need to do a few extra steps. Yeah. So most of the time, ninety something percent, uh, we we just take it. Yeah. It's okay. We use the Eclipse internal web browser, but we know Eclipse internal web browser is not as good as a regular external web browser. 
not as powerful, you know. It may sometimes some little features, little web features, may you may not see it in the Eclipse internal web browser. In that situation, we we have to go to the external web browser. We can see those special features. That means Eclipse internal web browser is not good enough. Is not as good as a regular external web browser. So that's just the case. Okay, but for ninety something percent of the time, it's good enough. So we do not bother to start an external web browser to test it. But you can do it if you like. Yeah. So here just give you the basic information. Yeah. Because if you have the knowledge of this these basic things, then, you know, when you encounter some special problems, so probably you can get better understanding, you know. Yeah. All right. So let me finish. This is the 